Yeah, amazing moments in our studio this morning. If ever you didn't believe in miracles, I think this morning is there's a miracle sitting right here. Imagine being left alone, having to swim for survival 100 kilometers out to at sea in the middle of a storm. Now imagine also having to survive a, a shark bump and multiple jellyfish attacks and a whole lot of other stuff in 2013. And I remember this remarkable story because I was on radio at the time. I wanted to speak to his wife. A fellow South African, Brett Archibald, he was lost at sea for 28 and a half hours, falling overboard at night, having to swim in the Indonesian Ocean for all that time. He subsequently released a book and we all want to know his story. It's called Alone, uh, The Search for Brett Archibald. Well, I found him this morning and he's sitting right here. Brett, it's good to speak to you. Good to speak to you too. Elaine. I remember at the time we were praying for your life because we heard about the story when you fell overboard. Mm. And then when you were discovered, we were all searching for more people to, to talk about, just to hear it. And now it's captured in a book. Tell me about what happened that night. It was just a bizarre situation. It was an accident. We'd been violent. Some of us on the boat had been violently ill. I was upstairs with a mate of mine. I had a Coke to drink. It made me feel ill again. Went to the side, vomited, passed out, woke up in the ocean with my boat sailing away. Did you see the boat sail away? I watched it sail into the distance. It was the most terrifying moment of my entire life. What happens the next morning when you're in Indonesian water, there's sharks, it's dark, you realize your friends aren't with you anymore. What happens? To be quite frank, I knew at that moment in my life I was dead and I just wondered how I was going to die and how long it would take. What happens when you're in the water? I mean, we talk about shark bumps, but what kind of conditions are we talking about? Tell me about the water. The fact that you pointed to your nose earlier to me and said that you were attacked by other things other than just jellyfish. I, look, the water was warm, which was a, a massive thing in my favor. The water was 28 degrees when I fell overboard. Dropped to 26, so a bit of hypothermia did set in. I, I was terrified that I would get eaten by a shark. There are not that many sharks over there, fortunately. So the shark that did bump me was a black tip reef shark. Interestingly, it was, it was the only time I nearly cried because the shark bumped me and then bumped me again, and I went down and I thought, this is how my life's going to end. And mm -hmm. I actually was saying, come, take me here, take me here. And then I realized it was a black tip reef shark, and I thought it was going to be my savior. Like, I can hold on to this thing, it'll mm -hmm. tow me to land. Yeah. Which never happened. I mean, the jellyfish, also blue bottles, I got stung by blue bottles. And then seagulls, I think I'd fallen asleep, and this thing hit me on the back of the head. I lifted my head up, and something smashed me in my face. And it was two seagulls. They came to eat you. They thought they came, you weren't there anymore. They thought I was a piece of floating flotsam. Wow. So here you are. I mean, 28, how, how do you survive 28 hours, not at sea, in the sea? What, what kept you going? And I, and I want to say this, 28 and a half, because Brett told me earlier that that last half hour was when it was the most difficult to, to stay in that water. Ilana, you know, the last half hour, just to jump to that, I, I'd given up. I, my boat had come back, my own boat had come back after 12 hours. They were so close, I could see them, they sailed away. I guess that was the second worst moment. I made it through the night, I didn't believe I could do that. Work, well, not awake, because I was awake the whole time. Came around the next morning to daylight, saw another boat, an Indonesian fishing boat, swam to it, was so close, I couldn't scream because my tongue and my throat were so swollen and full of salt. And I got so close to them and they sailed away. And I actually made a conscious decision to end my life, which was the most terrible thing I've ever done. And I went under and I swallowed water, I filled my lungs up with water and I tried to end my life. And you couldn't my, die? I couldn't die. Why my do you brain. think was your life saved? Firstly, I mean, for my family, I, I, my, my wife and my kids, I have no doubt that, that God was looking after me. I mean, I had when I look back and you'll, you'll read in the book, there were eight moments where... I think it was signs, be it, the, I know they were hallucinations, they weren't real, but they were real smacks around the head to say, hey, wake up now, bud, you've got to keep fighting. I want to keep talking about Brett because he's subsequently changed jobs, he's changed his life around, he's brought out this book alone, The Search for Brett Archibald. So he's going to stay with us on our Feel Good Breakfast show this morning. If you're watching this morning and you've ever wanted to end your life, I want to say this. There's a second chance in life for all of us. There's a reason you are here. There's a reason Brett is here and writing this book. And on the show this morning, it is crazy moments. Stay with us. There's a whole lot more happening on your Feel Good Breakfast show, guys. Over to you.